and here at CES 2018 we have the GH5S this is a very exciting new camera right here and uh, and actually right now I'm shooting this video with a GH5S uh, with a 12 millimeter Leica lens so hello so who are you uh, so I'm Sean I'm one of the product managers here with Panasonic uh, I'm with the imaging group uh, and uh, yeah we just announced the GH5S and uh, right now we're in dark yep. actually it's quite dark right here yes it is uh, how can we describe how dark it is right now so it's it's typical convention center without uh, uh, a majority of the lights on. So um, so uh, there's only some lights over there. Correct. And uh, with the GH5, it wouldn't perform as as good, right? So well, with the GH5, if if you're using fast lenses, if you're working in a, a you know with with the environment you have around you, the GH5 could definitely work in this environment if you're using the right optics with it. Um, the GH5S allows us to be um, more concerned with, or uh, not us, allows the shooter to be more concerned with composition, framing, you know, the, the actual content of what you're trying to shoot because you're not having to concern yourself as much with the lighting conditions. Um, we, we, one of the things we say about the GH5S is that it's an all light camera and that's because of that dual native ISO uh, technology that we've built into the system. That's, a, that's like a small EVA-1? So it, the, the, the concept is from the broadcast camera. So the EVA-1, the Vericam LT, the Vericam Pure, Vericam 35. Huge camera, $35,000 camera. So the, right? yeah, those are $60,000, $70,000 cameras. And then down now with the EVA-1, when you're talking about uh, you know a cinema-styled camera with Super 35 that we offer, the core technology of that is something that's unique to Panasonic in the way we implement it. So what dual native ISO is, is the, on the sensor, there are two analog circuits on every pixel. One designed for like good light, bright light, you know, kind of uh, normal shooting. The other is designed for lighting like what we're in right now. So what that means is that in traditional camera, you've got a single native ISO when we're talking in video sense. And then uh, the low range circuit on this camera's native ISO is 400. When you go into the high range native ISO, that's 2500. Now, this is the first time in a Lumix camera that we're actually stating what the native ISO is. But what that affords is the ability to kind of control this camera three separate ways. You can either set it to uh, work in an auto mode, which is what we're doing right now. So right now it's auto ISO? Yes. And um, uh, you can check me. You can, you can check me. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. So you are in, uh, we are in auto ISO right now. That means it's just gonna stay in a perfect kind of like exposure, or what does it mean? Yeah. So what what um, what being in auto ISO means with the way that the system works is you set your shutter speed, you set your aperture. We're shooting on the 12 millimeter 1.4, and we're shooting at 1.4. What that means is you set your ISO, uh, you set the camera up, in this case we have it set up in uh, shutter angle, and set it 180 degrees while recording 4K 60p in 8-bit. Uh, Actually, we're recording cinema 4K 60p 8-bit. That's a wider 4K, that's the full 4K. Yes, so that's the DCI 4K, so it's 4096 by 2160. What does DCI stand for? You got me. Digital Cinema inter interact International. Okay, sorry. There you go. So basically, this is the camera at, you know, when you're shooting 60p and you're going for that kind of content, and in this case, we're shooting in DCI, you, once you set your, your shutter angle up to 180 degree, it knows what shutter speed it's got to be at. You don't have to worry about your aperture changing, and you let the ISO um, move the way it needs. Um, it's a pretty common system across the board. But what our camera will do when you have the dual native system Can you set show up. The stuff you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. So what the camera will do when you have it set up in the dual native range. So this is a new menu selection. When you have it set in auto and you come into your ISO range, you're able to come down and say, I want auto ISO. And then you're allowed to come up on the top here and select your high range. So you can go all the way up. In this case, this one, this camera set on log. So the lowest that you can shoot is 320. The highest you can shoot with, with V-Log L is 25,600. If I take it out of log, 
and I go to say 709 and I do the same thing, I can actually up my ISO to 51,200 with a low range of 160. So what this allows you to do is either work at the native ISO, which is 400 and 2500, and then gain down for situations where getting cleaner footage at the cost of dynamic range is what you, is what you need to do or on the other side of it is going higher ISO, but maintaining dynamic range where you're going to be acceptable with some noise patterning, or not patterning, some noise. So when you work, again, with auto ISO, it will intelligently switch the circuits for you as you approach into that kind of range to maximize the dynamic range available. And what that means is, in, in general with the camera, we're saying around two stops better performance in low light. Some people are saying three and a half stops better on YouTube. Well, see, and here's the thing. We're, we're, we're fairly conservative with some of the, the numbers we give because it's, there with, with noise and with dynamic range, you have some of those, some of it is very subjective. So you start to look at it and say, one person may be fine with 6400 ISO or 12,800 or 25,600, but then the next person, it's unacceptable noise to them. So when we are, are really working with it, just like I was saying before, we, we're very straightforward with what we say the camera does. So the two stops in real world, it, it, it could be different in people's testing because of their threshold of what is acceptable noise, what is acceptable highlight roll off, so that's really where that comes from. So if people are seeing greater, that's okay. awesome. Does it mean there's some kind of like two chips in there? Because yeah. Because dual native ISO means two, two levels of... Yeah, so, so how, the, how the system works is on the back of the sensor, which in this case is the multi-aspect 10.2 megapixel chip, at the back side of every pixel, there are two analog converters. One designed for that 400 ISO range, which is the maximum balance in video, the balance of keeping the dynamic range and your noise pattern. The second circuit is designed at 2500 ISO for the same thing. The balance of the native 2500 ISO with the dynamic range. And it's, it's a physical analog uh, conversion off the chip where some systems use a digital voltage style version of this where it's still only one amplifier, uh, one uh, uh, analog converter. So uh, this is a huge deal. I mean, what I'm looking at right now on the screen, one thing that makes me a little bit happy is that it seems to be a little bit in focus. I yes. mean, it's, it's uh, what happened? Did you improve it? So yeah, just like we were saying about how with, with the GH5S, by taking the stabilization out, by lowering the resolution to where we're not down, uh, down sampling from 20 megapixel into 4K. Which is a very CPU intensive. It is. It's a lot to work in a processor. By doing that, it frees up processing power for a number of other Actually, things. Cinema 4K is a native megapixel, 10.2 or not? No, Cinema 4K is like 8 point, and I know I'm going to get this so wrong. It's, it's 8 point something. It's still down, well, the way this camera works is that multi-aspect sensor. You're using the proper pixels for the actual image. Without any downsampling. I, it just takes it off the sensor yeah, directly. Because it's this is the one thing that, that I actually I think gets lost when we talk about multi-aspect sensor, is that a multi-aspect sensor is bigger than a four-third sensor. So this is a slightly larger sensor than what's in the GH5. And the reason being is because the mount was designed to have stabilization. So that means that the circle of coverage that a, a micro four-thirds lens is designed for is actually larger to accommodate that sensor being able to move around. So we see the sensor in yours? Yes. So. So it's right there. The we'll multi-aspect so is right see. here and there. Yeah. So it's bigger than the GH5. Yeah. Now, we're talking slightly bigger, yeah. but what that means is that by going to the slightly bigger sensor and also lowering the resolution, every single photo site is that much bigger. And there's more area for us to work with when we, when we set this up. So 
between the dual native ISO, between the multi-aspect sensor, you're able to, to keep your field of view in all the different aspects, where traditionally when you jump from 4.3 to 3.2, or 16.9, or in 17 by 9 DCI, you get a slight field of view crop with the GH5, or, yeah, the GH5, because that's, it, it, it has to frame it properly within the width. This, every frame, every width is the proper resolution count near 10 megapixel and at 10 megapixel so that your field of view stays the same. 26 millimeter is 26 millimeter on all of it. And now I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to make it fail, it's autofocus, but it seems that it really uh, has more of the CPU on the Venus engine, the same Venus engine as GH5. Yep. But more is dedicated to autofocus right now, is that true? So it, the, the processing power can be diverted for many other things. Like we said, the autofocus, we're shooting in 60p. Um, the, the noise reduction system, the, the overall, in Cinema 4K. It, it, it means 60. that the camera doesn't have to worry about the stabilization and powering that. So because you're not worrying about the downsampling, you're not worrying about the stabilization when it comes to processing power, there's more available. So I guess in theory you could have had a, an extra CPU for the stabilization, but it actually wouldn't fit, right? The stabilization cannot fit in this. Uh, Correct. With this multi-aspect ratio sensor, is nothing Correct. to do with the body size. Well, so there's there's two things. Uh, there's two main reasons why the stabilizer is not in the camera. One is that um, you know yeah, there's the multi-aspect sensor, which is a larger sensor, and trying to get that in with yeah. with the stabilization unit, it, the camera would have to get bigger. There's just no size. There's no space. But there's a more important reason why the stabilizer's not included. And I know um, there's a lot out online about you know, the camera not having stabilization, but the reality is the platforms where the GH5 has been deployed in high-end production and in entry production or um, you know, a, a everyday production, let's say, there are cases where when you're, when you're using a, a sensor-stabilized camera on a gimbal or on a car mount where it's it's rigid mount to a car. So think, uh, there, you know, an uh, uh, automotive show on online. When you have a camera hard mounted onto a car, that camera now becomes part of the car's inertia if it hits a bump. A, the five axis stabilization is magnetic. There is no physical connection to the body. There's no way to put in a physical thing to stick it in nope. stable that's not nope. gonna happen that's not gonna not, happen not possible nope not so gonna they happen they were asking for that they were they were asking for you there's the market that is asking for you to take it out yes there it and it's not just the pro market asking for us to take it out because and these guys buy many cameras they buy eight cameras that they put them in the car right they, yeah they might they buy many actually yeah and and what happened was is you know when we start talking to people about you know how can we improve the cameras for the next generations those kinds of things we got this feedback, so we started investigating it. We started talking to the high-end production, and then starting to go into, you know, the the beginning filmmakers or you know the the seasoned uh, you know professionals that are, uh, you know, filming parkour. Or you're filming, uh, you know, BMX or skateboarding, where it's the same it's the same situation where with a handheld gimbal and you're running alongside someone or you're on a bike and you're riding alongside, uh, alongside someone, the camera and the gimbal and the bike or you're running is now one piece connected. The stabilization actual sensor in the GH5 is not part of that. So the shake will actually move on the camera while the sensor is still staying, staying still. If there's enough movement there, the, sen the camera moves and the sensor comes out of the stabilizer and to correct that artifact, is a much much harder process to the point where it it makes it not a situation where you don't want to use the setup. So as we started listening to the pro market uh, and you know the, the pro production market have this this need, and then seeing that that there are also um, everyday users that are having the same situation may not realize it. It it, it helps it, may, it it helps us to direct. Okay, well. What can we do to, to work and make a better product? And that is also what helps lead down that path of, well, if we're not gonna put a stabilizer in it, let's utilize the space. Let's go back to the multi-aspect sensor. Let's do something different and, and know that 
it's it 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 could be kind of controversial with some some shooters, but it's it just it works. Can you um, try to walk a little bit. Uh, yeah, we can Put try it. to walk. We are going to have to end right. in an, in one minute. One minute, okay. Yeah. As cool. they kick us out of the yeah. convention so, center. So uh, for the people that want that have their external gimbals, mm -hmm. the people that uh, that uh, that do the pro stuff, they're happy with that. But the GH5 was such an amazing stabilizer. Yes. So I guess. Well, but see, here's the thing. Product. But here's the thing. This is not replacing the GH5. This is sitting side to the GH5. The GH5 is still still a flagship camera, still one of our, our core important cameras. And Panasonic has made a transition to where we are three flagships. The G9 for photographers that still want some video. The GH5 for who uh, any creator who needs stabilization, wants these high, these awesome bit rates, wants this production, but also wants to take you know higher higher resolution stills. And then now the GH5S, which is designed for the higher end, um, the the higher demanding situations where you need low light, you need a rock solid system, and it's just going to perform. Is uh, like the 72S, the Sony, the low light performance is maybe as good or maybe even better. Sure, I, I'm going to let people that that take a look at the camera and work on it. I'm going to let them decide. 